In this video, we work our last example of an exponential type indeterminate form. We have the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of the natural log of x, all raised to the x minus 1. Um, as x approaches 1 from the right, the natural log function looks like this. Uh, the y values approach 0, but they're approaching um, 0 from the right. So there, this is a tiny um, positive number. And then we're raising it to the x minus 1 power. Um, as x approaches 1 from the right, x minus 1 is a tiny positive number. So this is the 0 to the 0 indeterminate form. Um, so to eliminate that, or to handle that 0 over 0 indeterminate form, we take the log of, we set y equal to the limit that we're looking for. We take the log of both sides, and then we say um, the log of a to the n is n times uh, the log of a. So we just bring that exponent down in front of the logarithm. Now, at this point, uh, x minus 1 is still approaching 0 as x approaches 1 from the right. And natural log of x is approaching 0 as x approaches 1 from the right. So now we're taking the log of a tiny positive number. Well, as x approaches 0 from the right, the logarithm goes to negative infinity. So this entire expression goes to negative infinity. So what we have is a 0 times negative infinity indeterminate form. In order to get rid of that 0 times negative infinity indeterminate form, we need to rewrite this as a quotient. And to do that, we either take 1 divided by this um, and put it in the denominator, or we take 1 divided by this function and put it in the denominator. Either way, we will get rid of the uh, 0 times negative infinity indeterminate form. If we take 1 divided by this expression and put it in the denominator, we'll have a negative infinity over infinity indeterminate form. If we put 1 divided by this in the denominator, we'll have a 0 over 0 indeterminate form. So it's really up to you. I would prefer to put this function in the denominator. So we'll say, let's take the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of natural log of the natural log of x divided by 1 over x minus 1. Now, as x approaches 1 from the right, this is a tiny positive number. 1 divided by a tiny positive number is a large positive number. So the denominator is approaching infinity. And this natural log of the natural log of x is approaching negative infinity. This natural log of x is approaching 0 from the right. And the log of a number that's slightly larger than 0 is going to be a very large negative number. The limit as uh, y goes to 0 from the right of log of y um, is a negative infinity. So we've got a negative infinity over infinity in determinate form, which means that we can use L'Hopital's rule for that. We'll take the derivative of the numerator and we'll divide by the derivative of the denominator and the limit of that function will be equal to the limit of this function. We'll do that now. The derivative of natural log of the natural log of x is 1 divided by the inside function. Our inside function was natural log of x. And then we multiply by the derivative of the inside by the chain rule. And of course, the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. And then for the other one, we had the derivative of 1 divided by x minus 1. So I'll just write that. That's the same as x minus 1 to the negative 1 power. And that requires the chain rule as well. So I've got 1 divided by the natural log of x times the derivative of natural log of x, which is 1 over x, all divided by the derivative of x minus 1 to the negative 1. That requires the power rule. We bring the power down, multiply by the original function to the 1 less power, put the original function back inside for our chain rule, and then we multiply by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of the inside is just a 1. So I've got a fraction here, and there's an implied fraction there. That's 1 divided by x natural log of x, all divided by negative 1 over x minus 1 squared. If I put this expression in the denominator because of the negative exponent, whenever I have a fraction divided by a fraction, I can simplify that by multiplying by the reciprocal. We leave the fraction in the numerator alone and multiply by the reciprocal of the fraction in the denominator. And when we multiply straight across, this is what we get. Now, 
Now, as x approaches 1, natural log of x approaches 0. So I've got a 1 times a 0 in the denominator, so that's approaching 0. And the numerator is also approaching 0. So this is a 0 over 0 in determinate form. So we'll use L'Hopital's rule again. And I use L'Hopital's rule right here as well. So I put a little H over my equal sign whenever I'm applying that rule. They take the derivative of the numerator. That's negative 2 times the inside function to the 1 less power. So it's going to be the first. The inside function was x minus 1. Then we multiply by the derivative of the inside by the chain rule. That's just a 1. And then in the denominator, we've got to use a product rule. The product rule says the derivative of a product is the derivative of the first, which is 1, times the second, plus the derivative of the second, which is 1 over x, times the first. And if we simplify, we get the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of negative 2 times the quantity x minus 1, all divided by um, 1 over x times x, which is 1, plus natural log of x. Now, as x approaches 0 from the right, or excuse me, x approaches 1 from the right, natural log of uh, 1 is actually 0. So this function is continuous at 0, so we're going to have 0 plus 1, which is 1 in the denominator, and the numerator is approaching 0. So we've got 0 divided by 1. Since this function is a, um, continuous at 1, we'll just plug it in. 0 divided by 1, which is 0. So the natural log of y is equal to 0, which means that y, which was the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of the natural log of x raised to the x minus 1, is equal to e to the 0, because I had the log of y equals 0. So I exponentiate both sides, and I find that my limiting value of this function is 1. I like these examples because it shows you first how to get rid of the um, exponential type indeterminate form, and then you handle lots of product type indeterminate forms, the 0 times negative infinity, and then we've got the, the various forms for L'Hopital's rule infinity, negative infinity over infinity, we've got the 0 over 0, lots of um, different calculations that we do. Um, but eventually they get to a point where we can evaluate the limit. The function's continuous there, you plug in the x value, and then we, we solve for the, the limiting uh, the limit that we were looking for. Um, so that is that. If we want to, we can explore um, some of these exponential type indeterminate forms from the last video and this video, um, just numerically on Desmos. We can look at this graph and see what happens to this function as x approaches infinity. We can also look at it numerically with a table of values with x getting larger and larger, seeing what that y value does. And then just as an illustration of the computation, we can say, OK, if I take the log of both sides of this and then use that property of logs, the log of a to the n is n times log of a. If I do that, then I end up with that product type indeterminate form. I need to write it as a quotient type indeterminate form. And then we get this one, and then we exponentiate to get what y is. Like all of those calculations um, can be illustrated on uh, desmos.com. If we look at the graph of this function and uh, the y values on this graph as x gets very large, and as if we look at the y values on this graph and the graph of this function as x gets very large. So we can actually graph the function and see it, and then we can also look at a table of values. So we'll do that. For examples 12, 13, and 14. So for example 14, we had natural log of x raised to the x minus 1. If we graph that, it looks like this. And if we think about what happens as x approaches 1 from the right, and that was the question. It was it said, what is what happens to the y values on this graph as x approaches 1 from the right? Looks like the y values approach 1. And it actually looks like the function is continuous at 1. So if we plug in 1 here, we get natural log of 1, which is 0. And then we have when x is equal to 1, we get um, 1 minus 1 in the exponent. So we also get 0. So this is 0 to the 0 indeterminate form. But Desmos calculated that for us. Um, it didn't treat it like an indeterminate form. Um, that's OK. That's fine. Uh, we, we can still sort of illustrate uh, what we did. Um, after we took the log of both sides, we came up with this new function. It was g of x equals x minus 1 times the log of x. 
And that function is a zero, oops, the log of the log of x, right? That function is a zero times negative infinity indeterminate form because natural log of x is a tiny positive number. The log of a, a very small positive number is a very large and magnitude negative number. So this logarithmic function is approaching negative infinity as uh, the argument, what's inside approaches zero from the right. So this is neg approaching negative infinity and this is approaching zero. So this is a zero times infinity indeterminate form, but we might be interested in the y values um, as x approaches one, and it looks like the y values approach zero. And we can see that if we make a table of values. So I can um, do that relatively quickly. So we'll have a one there, a 1.0001, 1 1.001. 1 and I'm just trying to illustrate what happens as we get closer to one. So these y values are, or x values are actually farther away from one. And as we go up on the table, we're getting closer to one. Um, and then in this column, I want the values of g at those x values. Now this function is undefined when x is equal to one because you can't take the logarithm of zero. But we can see um, that the y values seem to be getting very small as x gets closer to one. So maybe we'll plug in 1.00001 and see they just get smaller. Um, so uh, yeah, it looks like uh, that's approaching zero and the log um, of y is equal to the limit of this function g as x approaches one. If the limit of the function g as x approaches one is zero, y must be um, e to the zero, which is one, which is consistent with this table of values up here. Um, so that's what we've got. Um, by taking the log of both sides, we were able to uh, get rid of that exponential type indeterminate form, turn it into a product type indeterminate form, and then um, it eventually evolved into an infinity over infinity one and a zero over zero one. And so we end up with a, a limit uh, at the end after doing all those calculations, y is equal to e to the zero, which is one. So that was example 14. That was the last one we did. Now the example 13, got cosine of x squared. And we're interested in this as x approaches zero. Cosine of x squared looks like this. It's kind of cool. Check it out. There are lots of little pieces. But this is what the one looks like in the vicinity of zero. And we're interested in the limit of this as x approaches zero. So I just made a table of values. And I said, well, what happens to the y values on that graph? It looks like they're approaching one. Um, and as x approaches zero, we've got cosine of zero with, for the base. That's one. And then the exponent is uh, zero squared, which is zero. So I've got a one to the zero form. I'm not actually sure if that's an indeterminate form. Um, since I wasn't sure if it's indeterminate and I didn't really feel like thinking through it, honestly, um, I could take the, let y equal the limit of that function f, take the log of both sides, and then use logarithmic properties. And then we'll, we'll come up with uh, a new, new function g that we're taking the limit of. So we end up with g of x equals x squared times the natural log of the cosine of x. And we say, okay, well, what happens to this function? Whoops. I don't want to do that. Stop asking Siri. <laughs> so I have uh, x squared times natural log of the cosine of x. I might want to make a table of values for g as well. So we'll just add another table and we're interested uh, in what happens near one or near zero, excuse me. So I'm gonna go to one tenth, negative one tenth and negative one one hundredth and then negative one one thousandth, negative one ten thousand and then zero. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. One ten thousand, uh, one thousand, one one hundred, one ten. And then we'll say, okay, well, what happens to the y values on the graph G? Looks like X, uh, G is approaching zero um, as X approaches zero. 
Um, natural log of cosine of zero is natural log of one. Natural log of one is zero. And then we've got uh, x squared, which is zero. So we have zero times zero. So that's actually not, actually not even an indeterminate form. That function is actually continuous at zero. So we could have just plugged in zero and we would have got zero. So um, log of y, where y is the limit that we're looking for, is equal to zero. So uh, y is actually e to the zero, which is one. Now, in that case, that technique might not have been necessary because I'm not sure that that's an indeterminate form, but I don't think it was illegal. It was just perhaps unnecessary. It just made me feel better to do the calculation that way, so I did. So that was for example 13. And then example, uh, four, or example 12, I thought was pretty cool involves that uh, natural base E. So we've got one plus one over X raised to the X as X approaches zero, or excuse me, as X goes to infinity, sorry. And one over X goes to zero as X approaches infinity. So we've got one plus zero. So the base is approaching one and the exponent is approaching infinity. So I've got one raised to the infinity power. That's my indeterminate form. So in order to get rid of that one to the infinity indeterminate form, we take uh, let y equal the limit, take the log of both sides, then the log of y is equal to the limit of a new function g of x, and we found that using uh, log properties, log of a to the n is n times log of a. So basically we can bring that exponent, if I take the log of this, I can bring that exponent x out front, and I end up with x times the log of the base. Oops. Some weird stuff there. Now I'm interested in ha what happens to this function as x goes to infinity, so I just let x get larger and larger and see what happens to the y values on the graph. Well, the y values approach 1 um, on the graph of, of g of x, and uh, g of x is this orange function here. If we wanted to, we could plot the line y equals 1, and we can see that that orange function g of x approaches y equals 1. We say, okay, well, what does that mean for our original function? Well, if, if the uh, y is equal to the limit of the original function and the natural log of y is equal to the limit of g and the limit of g is one, then natural log of y equals one. So y must equal e. Um, and that is consistent with what we get here. Um, when we look at the original function, f of x equals one plus one over x, all in parentheses, raised to the x power, it looks like this. And if we graph the horizontal line y equals e, um, we see that our function gets very, very close to that value as x goes to infinity. It gets closer and closer and closer the farther out we get. And you say, how do you really know? Well, you can plug in some x values. You can't be sure, right? Uh, provided all of our calculations are correct, for sure. Um, but if we want to, if we want to explore it in another way rather than using that algebraic approach. We could substitute various x values that got larger and larger and look at the corresponding y values of the function. And we see that those y values are getting close to 2.718.2682 when x equals 100,000. And what's the value of e in, a, in our, according to our calculator? 1.71828. So these are the same as each other. Um, in the first four decimal places, um, or the first four digits after the decimal place, and then that fifth is different. So I've got a six um, when x is equal to 100,000 there, and then we have an eight when x is, or um, for the actual uh, fifth digit after the decimal place for, for the base e. Um, so this is pretty good, it's pretty accurate. Um, and we can see that it's getting closer and closer to E as X gets larger. If we want, you're like, oh, that's not close enough. Well, you could plug in a, a million if you want. And now we've got the 2.8 instead of the 2.6. <laughs> and then that zero is wrong, where there's a one there and there's a zero there. So uh, it's even more accurate as X gets larger and larger. And so that's it for our exponential forms. Uh, the last type of indeterminate form is that infinity minus infinity. We'll do that in the next video.